Hello, today we're going to be reviewing the Keys of Marinus. The basic summary of this episode is that the Doctor, Susan, Ian and Barbara land on planet Marinus where an old man has invented a machine which eradicates all evil from the universe or something or like that. But there's an evil cult trying to get the Marinus machine. That's the dog. He's here today. The team, the TARDIS team, the TARDIS crew. Uh, this is going to be tragic. So the TARDIS team have to go around the planet Marinus collecting the keys to the Doomsday, wait, not the Doomsday, the anything but Doomsday machine. And in each episode of the six episode story, they encounter a new kind of danger, which they must defeat in order to get the keys back to the person who made the Marinus machine. Things I liked about this episode. The Vroods. They look like Batman combined with Black Manta and something else. Power Rangers, that's the one. Yes. The Vood, the Vood which is like the villains of the episode, look like Batman combined with Black Manta from Aquaman and the Power Rangers, which is pretty weird, yet pretty awesome too, but mostly weird. Episode 2 in general. It's got some great stuff on it and the point of view, like there's one point where it's like Barbara's point of view when she's looking at the others and the temple is in ruins basically but the others don't see it as ruins, they see it as like a proper posh place and that but Barbara sees it as what it actually is which is pretty cool I thought for the time because it's you don't usually see that nowadays, never mind back then. In what I believe is episode 3, Ian and Barbara are in a plant laboratory type thing which, let's face it, is basically poison ivy's way. It really is. It's got plants that are being controlled and have... that's a dog tooth that is. Foolish runt doesn't know what downplay is and he's lost one of his baby teeth. Episode 3 is very Indiana Jonesy kind of thing. It's got an idol at the start, like in Raiders of the Lost Ark. It also has one of those spiky ceiling things that come down and crash you. Like that, which, uh, which is in Temple of Doom. I think in Keys of Marinus you start to see the relationship between him and Barbara a lot more than what it has in the past two episodes because like in Unearthly like I said in Unearthly Child you can see the friendship in that between them but in the previous two episodes you couldn't really see it but I think it comes back in Keys of Marinus I knew it would be a bad idea to do a review downstairs with you around but I like this setup. The only bad thing about it is you constantly, ow, biting. Yeah, I'm doing a review. <laughs> in episode four, there's some like knights in the ice temple, which I found the costumes for really quite good, even though the knights themselves are a bit dumb. Costumes are great though. You can't knock the costumes for the knights because they were awesome. Compared to the Edge of Destruction where there was only four people in the entire thing, I think the guest cast for this episode was really good. I mean like, I think the guest cast carried half of the episode to be honest. That would be the dog knocking the camera. Things I didn't like, like you when you like this. Episode 1 features the return of the unvaluable endless corridors which were seen in the darks. 
Will you leave me alone? Whoever just drove past on a moped, thank you for distracting the dog. But yeah, episode one features the return of the endless corridors, which are really, really fun. Ian and Barbara don't feel like teachers anymore because now Ian's taken on this role of like the TARDIS's James Bond, which I don't think really suits a history, no wait, a science teacher. My guest cast is being a swine. If the script told you that Marinus is a different planet, it lied. There are wolves, courtrooms, museums, plants, sunflowers. It's basically Earth with a different name. The court scenes of episodes 5. And six. Uh, they are so dull. Near the climax of episode six, the doctor and the Ian, Barbara, and Susan are in the temple again from episode one. But there is a brood right behind them, covered by like some kind of web or something. And you only see the silhouette, but you'd expect it to attack them, wouldn't you? It's never seen again. Nothing happens, it just appears behind them and gone forever. Best performance of the episode. I think. Each of them had their own special episode again, especially episode 3 because that was clearly dedicated to Barbara because she knew it by episode 3, episode 2. But I would have to say the best performance by the initial cast in this. Will you shut up? If there are any birdologists listening, would you take a listen to this? Is that the mating call of that type of bird? But yeah, for the first time ever, I'm kind of stuck on which had the best performance. It's out of Ian or the Doctor. Because after each episode, I write down who I think has had the best performance in that episode. And then whoever wins that, I think had the best performance in the episode. Which is fair, really. But... In this episode, Ian and, Bar Ian and the Doctor are tied. See? So, make up your mind. I would personally say the Doctor, really. Because, well, it's William Hartnell. But yeah, as you probably saw right there, I give this episode a 5 out of 10. Mostly because of the bad points I found on it but it's still a good episode to start with if you can get a villain that looks like a cross between batman a power ranger and black manta then you my friend are a genius so that has been my review of the case of marinus next time i will be watching the aztecs which is the story right after this one so yeah, just pretend I'm saying what I usually say at this point, just like, join me next time, etc, 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 End of blog update. The bird's been dumped. <laughs>